Welcome back to the Further North Podcast, guys. Preview pod, a big game coming up this week down in Tassie. Um, sorry I didn't get the podcast out yesterday. Had a little bit on, but here we are. So the teams have dropped, um, and obviously we're going down to Tassie to play Port Adelaide or the Jason Horn Francis Cup, as it's going to be known um, thus far or thus going forward. So really quickly, there's been a lot of chat about booing, and let's get into this. Just my opinions. I've had a lot of messages this week from people saying they won't be booing him, um, and I completely understand. I completely understand if you do not uh, feel like booing is okay, and thank you for all the messages that people did send on their opinions on that. Um, personally, for me, I don't care about booing. I think it's part of the game. I don't agree with booing if it's obviously to do with anything culturally towards people or to harm anybody. That is not okay. But booing has been happening for years in sports. Um, and I think Matthew Lloyd made a pretty good point on Footy Classified where, you know, this week, Carlton, Western Bulldogs, if uh, Norton's lining up for goal um, and he's got the yips, every fan's going to boo him because they want to put him off. And it's not really much deeper than that. I know it's different with Buddy Franklin, um, but I don't think the booing for Buddy is anything malicious. Just an opinion. He's been a great player for so long. He's destroyed basically every team in the league. He's now old, slow, and not with it. So now's the fan's chance to say, ha ha, you're old. That's as deep as I think it is. And as long as it's not malicious, booing is fine for me. We're all big boys. We need to grow up. It's okay. Let's not take everything to heart. So just my opinion on the booing. If you don't agree, that's okay. We can all live in a world where we don't agree with things, but we have a common interest and we love North. So let's get into the game. So the team has dropped for Saturday and in comes Hugh Greenwood and out goes Ben Cunnington and Charlie Lazaro. I assume that means Lazaro's the sub again or is, is he because he's on the emergencies? Um, not really sure why they say drop Lazaro if he was kind of the sub anyway. Anyway, um, other than that, no changes, which is a bit surprising to me, to be honest. Um, exactly the same lineup except for Hugh Greenwood in, Ben Cunnington out basically. Um, as for the emergencies, we've got Eddie Ford, Phoenix Spicer, Charlie Lazaro, and CCJ. I really wanted to see CCJ in this forward line. I don't like Logue up there. I know he can do okay, but he's a defender. Um, and just entering back in with Larky and playing Zerha as that second forward again, I don't like it. Uh, it doesn't feel good to me. So I would have had CCJ in the starting 22 for sure, but that's not the way it's gone. Um, I like that they uh, that Clarko kept all of the kids in. I, I guess for me, just for an opinion, Lazaro and um, Jack Marnie, those two for me, I would have probably been dropping uh, for maybe a Eddie Ford. And I think I'd like to see like a Cooper Harvey in this team. I know obviously we can't put all those guys in without taking some out. But these are all the players I'd like to see rotated sort of through the team. Now, what would I have done to the team personally? I probably would have taken Marnie and Lazaro out. Um, and I would have liked uh, CCJ in. And I don't know. I think give Eddie Ford a go. Ford line for the moment is the weakest point of our team. And I would like to see something else in there. Um, you obviously got Powell who... Played nearly every game until his ankle got hurt. He was good at the start and then dropped. Um, obviously, Will Phillips seems to be having a stint in the VFL. And maybe we talk about that for a little bit. I don't mind it. I am worried about Will Phillips. I, I don't know if I'm seeing enough with him to know that he's going to turn into a good player. Um, obviously, I understand last year and his health struggles, and that's okay. Uh, I'm glad he's back now, but... I'm not sure. I don't think he's done enough this season to warrant a spot. So dropping him and getting form in the VFL is fine. Tom Powell, you know, I think he's done okay. I'd probably bring him back in soon. But we do have a little bit of a cluster with I'd probably take Wardlaw over Powell right now as well. Um, anyway, glad Greenwood is back in. He deserves the spot. Um, but it, it, it's, it's at the expense of Cunnington. Let's talk about Cunnington for a second. 
Cunnington's copped a lot of criticism this week. And last week on the podcast, I did say Cunnington is in this team nearly every week for me. And I'm standing by that. I know that he's maybe not performing um, to the level that we know of him. But even from a leadership and an experience perspective, I think he gets a game every week because we don't have anyone else in that midfield of experience. I know Greenwood has played a lot, but he doesn't bring that, you know, that thing that Cunnington does, that the shin bonus spirit. He, he doesn't bring that. Um, and I like Greenwood, and I think he deserves a spot in the team. But I don't feel good that Cunnington is dropped. And I think players for their experience right now for our team are more important than just playing all kids. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I think I would have played him down in Tassie and maybe rested him for the week after at Marvel because Marvel's a bit of a faster track. But Clarko hopefully knows more about footy than me. Other than that, the lineup's okay. I think, yeah, I wanted CCJ in there to get another target up forward. Other than that, I think everyone else held their spot. Look, like I said, I'd have Marnie and I'd have Lazara out because I don't think they're good enough to be part of our future. But, you know, we may as well try anything at this point. Um, but Ford and Goda, Powell, Wardlaw, Harvey and Archer, these are guys long-term I want to see, especially Archer. Archer's got something about him. I know he's injured and he's getting back to form. But, um, yeah, I'd be putting him in this team pretty, you know, pretty quickly after he is ready. Other than that, um, yeah, the team is what it is. Uh, I did ask for your comments on Instagram, so I'm going to read a few of these out. I just posted, um, you know, what your thoughts on the lineup are. So thank you for everyone who replied. So I'll just read out some of them here. Um, we've got Jared Andrew. would love to see Spicer. Spicer is, he's okay. Like in the VFL, he's okay and he can be a spark I guess at this point yeah we may as well throw him in because he had moments when he came in but the dude weighs like 40 kilos and uh, I don't know if he can create his own magic I guess uh, in that forward line but it may as well be a go I'm not I'd love what Spice is meant to be I'd love a player like that but look anything's worth a go Max underscore BD23 Sad to see Cunners out. Happy that Greenwood in. CCJ is sub, I reckon. I agree, Max. I agree CCJ should definitely be the sub um, if he's not going to be in the 22. Like I said, I would absolutely have him in the 22 to back Larky up. Our forward line is way too small, but hopefully he's sub and gets subbed on. Uh, Brighton Isles, underscore Isles, a regular commenter. Uh, good that Cunners gets rest and Greenwood comes in uh, for great flexibility. Ford would be the go. I agree. Ford uh, deserves a chance. He kicked three last week. Harvey, Cooper Harvey kicked four. Obviously, Eddie Ford's got some experience at this level. Um, and Cunners for Greenwood's okay. I just, yeah, I want Cunners in this team. And I think he brings a lot more than, you know, maybe stats suggest. Harley Harbour. CCJ or Laz as the sub. I would like Laz in the side next week for his leg speed. Um, yeah, possibly, possibly. I think I'd probably play a Gota um, or someone like that over the top of him. But look, this guy deserves an extended run. Um, Alex Hudson, Daniel Howe, obviously. Yeah, Daniel Howe, we, look, I've still got PTSD. Daniel Howe could absolutely be the sub this week. Amy underscore Lowry. Hugh too good to miss, but it still hurts for Cunners. Yeah, I agree. Does Ford have to to bag 10 plus for a run? Also agree with that. Our Ford line is struggling and his last name's Ford. So that kind of makes sense. But I agree, Amy. I think um, Ford definitely deserves a run. James underscore Trotter 99. Ford will be the sub. Put the house on it. I don't know, man. CCJ, I'd much rather a tall Ford in there to back up with Paul Curtis and Curtis Taylor and these other guys running around at his feet. I know those guys haven't, you know, been as good the last few weeks, but... Once again, my opinion on Paul Curtis, the guy could go off any week and he's got so much talent, so I'd be keeping him in and keeping him in until he bursts through this form. Curtis Taylor, yeah, one of the ones that's sort of on the brink for me and maybe we swap an Eddie Ford for him in the next few weeks, but see who performs better. Um, Dave.i.m, pretty decent. Ford line needs to be changed up. CCJ for Curtis Taylor, Ford the sub. Would not mind that as well. Would not have minded that at all. 
Heno underscore nineteen seventy six. Balanced team like Greenwood in, he can help out in the ruck. Well, yeah, true. Um, props have Spicer as the sub to add more zip. Would not mind seeing Spicer, but I guess there's my opinion just before. And Brad dot Edwards dot seven five two eight says CCJ. Would love to have seen CCJ in this team. The guy deserves a run. We need a tall forward. Um, give him a go. Someone else to take a mark. Because Larky's not a pack mark and CCJ's two metres. So, yeah, a bit disappointed he's not in the team. We need someone else up there. But anyway, thank you for your comments, guys. Further North Pod on Instagram and Further North Podcast on Facebook. I always ask for your contributions um, to the episodes. So follow those and I'll read out your comments. So that's the team. Um, a couple of little points to talk on through the week here. Um, we've obviously had the Clarkson press conference and whatnot. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. But Taron Thomas is back. And I know there's going to be some mixed opinions on this. Um, but this is a platform where I talk about my opinions. And hopefully you guys can share yours as well through the social medias and everything. Um, I did talk about Taron Thomas a few weeks ago about my personal opinion on this situation. And just to recap that, um, I do want to see him back in this team eventually. I don't think exiling a player who's 22 years old, gone through a very tough time and made some mistakes is okay. Um, I understand completely if people, you know, want him gone. Um, But I think for me, my bigger and bolder point on that topic was it's more of a, a young man and his life situation more than getting back and playing football. Now they put him back in the VFL. He played again on the weekend. And I think that's the best thing for him. Throughout the week, uh, it seems to be really gaining some traction that he's going to be back in the AFL system in the next couple of weeks, um, and then he'll be available for selection. We might see Taron Thomas playing in the next month or so, which is pretty wild to think about how hard people went in on him. Uh, fairly as well, um, but how hard people were going in on him through uh, all the, the media outlets and all that sort of stuff. It's crazy how things can turn around in football, isn't it? Because Jordan Dugowie is everyone's favourite son. Dustin Martin, everyone loves him. And it's crazy. I, You know, I don't mind seeing Taron Thomas coming back into this team. I think, you know, off-field stuff aside, we need his class and we need his talent in this team. If we want to push forward, we've got a guy that can do it. Now, as for off the field... Obviously, I don't want him to play unless he's done the right things, he's learned, he's pulled his head in, he's matured, and he's ticked all those boxes, you know, off the field. As long as he's done that, I'm personally more than happy to welcome him back into this team. He can be a valuable asset going forward for us. And he's made some mistakes. He's a young kid, but let's get him back on the right path. And us as fans and the football club, maybe not, you know, we don't. we, we personally don't have a duty of care for him. But being in a supporting a supportive environment is going to be able to make him move past all of the negativity. So I think that's good. I, I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's going to be in contention. Um, and I'm glad he's hopefully sorting his things out off the field and is going to grow up to be a better man and, you know, have a successful career in life. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about Taron Thomas as well because I know this is a divisive topic. Um, I'm going to hopefully be getting uh, another guest on in the next week or two. Uh, I know you guys have just have to hear me talk by myself for a while, but I'm going to get another guest on and we're going to talk about Taron Thomas to get a different perspective, just so it's not just my perspective. I want to see what you guys think as well. But message me, comment on my stuff. Let me know what uh, your opinion on that is. So the next thing, which is another sensitive topic, was uh, the Hawthorne uh, investigation, the Hawthorne racism investigation. Now, Alistair Clarkson's talked about this, and once again, this is gaining traction this week with Todd Viney's interview he did on radio and Clarkson talking about it in his press conference. It's crazy when they said this has been going on for eight months, which is, that alone is crazy. But still, Clarkson and co have not been able to put their story forward to any sort of investigative panel or governing body, right? Now, I'm no expert on this and I'm just going off the facts I've heard, but that is 
so poor that someone who's been accused of something that they've said is false has not even had a chance yet to tell their side of the story to anyone who's doing the investigation. That is wild to me. I really believe that Clarkson is innocent here. Not that we shouldn't take claims like that seriously, because of course we should. And the only reason I say I think Clarkson is innocent is because if there was real legs to it, in my opinion, the AFL wouldn't have let him and Fagan come back in and coach again. And North Melbourne wouldn't have let Clarkson come back into the club and the board unanimously vote him back in. Maybe I'm wrong there, but that's what makes me confident that this will blow over is because that's a bad PR move for North. That's a bad PR move for the AFL. Fagan just got a two-year contract extension. There's no way that all these parties aren't sourcing the best legal advice possible for the situation, especially Fagan. Because why would Fagan sign this deal and then if he thinks he's going to get fired or, you know, exiled from the AFL? Now, just to be clear again, in no way am I saying that we shouldn't take the claims seriously and going forward with other scenarios, you know, we should ignore anybody or not take their claims seriously. But it's also important to remember that because just because someone claims something doesn't mean that we go after the people who have been claimed to do said thing and treat them like they're guilty straight away. That's all I'm saying. So that's my two cents on the matter. It's interesting that it's really coming to a head this week and there's a lot of articles and investigations and things on it. That's just my two cents. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Uh, But from the information I've got and all the things I've seen and heard and just how long the investigation has been going for and if Clarkson's, you know, I I say he's telling the truth when he says he hasn't been able to tell his story, that's wild to me. And if it was cut and dry and if there was a body of evidence to suggest it's true, it would have been done months ago. But anyway, that is what it is. I hope you all understand my opinion on that. And uh, let me know if you differ on that and we can chat about it. Always happy to chat. So, Port Adelaide this week down in Tasmania. I'll be flying down there. I'll be going to the game with the Close to a Flag boys. If anyone listening to this is going to be down at the game, um, message the page. We're all going to be in general admission. Uh, we're just, I think we're going to stand on the hill. All you guys who follow their page and uh, listen to the podcast, please come and stand with us. We can make our own little cheer squad down there. So message me and I'll let you guys know where we're going to be. Um, can we win? Can we win? No, no. We can win. Will we win? No, I don't think so. And I don't think that's a negative attitude to go in with. And I think everyone should understand that at this point. Port Adelaide are a good team. As much as I hate them and as much as I want them to be awful, they're a good team. Um, I think, you know, if we compete sort of like we did last week, and I know last week's game was gross, but we didn't let it blow out. And I think the young guys last week played Clarko's game plan pretty well. And with more games, it's going to come on with them. And I liked seeing all that youth in that team. Um, but they've got a pretty dominant forward line. They've got a dominant midfield. Their defense is strong. There's not really a facet of the game where I think we might be able to get a hold of them. I really just hope that youthful exuberance is going to come through and keep it close and give them a challenge. It's about showing that the game plan is coming together, showing that the youth have a future and they can be A or B grade AFL players and showing to the fans and even to other players, there is something going on here. That's all I really want from the game. Uh, Junior Rioli has been suspended for the game, which is fantastic because small forwards usually tear us apart. Um, so I'm glad we're not going to see a Luke McDonald tag on him. And, um, yeah, I think, look, if we can keep this under 30, um, if we can keep within four or five goals, I think I'm pretty happy with that result and just show something. Don't back down. Are we going to see any little niggly moments with Zerhart Horn Francis? I kind of hope so. That's the stuff the fans feed off, don't they? But, um, I think they are very, very strong in all of these assets. So I wish I could be more positive there, guys, as well. I'm sorry. I really wish I could be. But do you guys agree? Like, 
Do you think that's me being negative? Once again, message me and tell me and talk to me. I don't think that's negative um, because I, I think I fully grasp where this team is at and what we're going to be, you know, what we should be looking for in these games. Let's have a look around the league now. We'll do some quick tips on the upcoming fixtures. Richmond, Geelong. Uh, Geelong win that. Richmond look very average this year. Um, Geelong by, I don't know, I can't count that high. Eagles, Suns, yuck. Um, but I'd say I'd hope the Suns get that one. Um, and Oscar Allen kicks none because my bet's slowly slipping away from me. Um, to remind everyone who doesn't know, I have a bet with my coworker, Big Ant, at work. Who's going to kick more goals this year, Oscar Allen or Nick Larky? It was looking good first four weeks, and uh, he's getting pretty smug. Sydney and Fremantle, you'd think the Swans would win that in Sydney. Um, Hawthorne, Melbourne, Melbourne will destroy them. Brisbane, Essendon, um, could be a tough game. Brisbane should be, if they're real premiership threats, they need to be winning this game. It's at the Gabba as well. Um, Carlton Western Bulldogs. I reckon this is the game of the round. I reckon this one will be really good. Um, I think, oh, Bulldogs are favorites. I think Carlton have to get it done, don't they? Carlton have more pressure on them. So I'm going to back the Blues, but I'm not, I'm not confident. Um, Adelaide and St. Kilda. Interesting. St. Kilda have been better all year, but Adelaide are favorites at home. I'm going to go the Crows. The Saints were poor last week. We were poorer, but uh, I'm going to back the Crows. I don't like it because the Crows are yuck, but I'm going to back them. And the Pies beat the Giants. Let's not even even worry about that. Um, so, yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, if you saw, I posted up uh, the Obscure Player of the Week. Um, now, this week's player was Liam Anthony. If you guys remember the Possession King uh, Liam, Liam Anthony. Now, let's see. I haven't even checked the post to see if you've got any Liam Anthony memories. Uh, Nathan Crosland on Facebook just says, memories, question mark? Which, fair enough. Um, James Duke says, watching him get 30 disposals and, and, and turning over 25 of them. Jeez, come on, guys. Liam Anthony was so strange, wasn't he? Because... I don't know. At one point, he looked like he was going to be a really, really crucial player in our team. Um, let's have a look here. What other memories have we got? Uh, Peter D. Flati. Flati. Sorry, mate. I butchered that name. I know you, you uh, have contacted me a lot, so I should know the name better by now. I apologize. He says, I was always a fan of his. Nice guy, too. What a shame he came to he came so close to 100 games for us. Who knows if he has kids, how good they will be. Father, son, Liam, Anthony pick. Who knows? Um, and Zane Tormey says, green sub vest specialist. Oh, poor Liam Anthony. He would rack them up, wouldn't he? He would just rack the possessions up. And then he just disappeared. That was so weird. Anyway, bit of fun, bit of trip down memory lane. Um, thank you for tuning in again, guys. Um, once again, if you are going down to the Tassie game or anyone in Tasmania listening, message me, message the Facebook or the uh, the, the Instagram. We'll meet up at the game and we'll all have a drink and, uh, you know, boo and jeer and, and cheer and say, hooray, we kicked a goal before half time this week. So message me. It'll be good to catch up. Thank you for listening in, guys. The podcast... After the game, we will be out Tuesday morning. It will not be out Monday morning because I fly back to Tassie, or from Tassie then. So it's going to be a day late. Apologies again, but I can't take my podcast gear down there because that sucks. Anyway, thank you for listening once again. We'll be back very soon. More guests coming. I've got some jersey tier lists I'm thinking of doing in the future. Um, we're going to do some discussions about what I think our 22 will be by the end of the year and all that sort of stuff's coming. So... Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you on Tuesday morning. Go north. Kanga, kanga.